Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I'm here at the Oradev Conference in Malmo, Sweden, and I have here with me Roy Ashrove, who is author of The Art of Unit Testing and uh, works at TypeMock, which is a company that produces unit testing tools for .NET and C++. And uh, Roy, it's been a real pleasure having you with me this week. It has. Uh, <laughs> so, um, really enjoying it. So, what? where were we? What should we do next? So, we were... Last we left our heroes, uh, they were trying to get the test working for the alternate row back color. Right, and um, we expected that to fail, mm -hmm. and it didn't, and it did. It did. And, and it looks like it failed for the right reason. It, we said pink. That looks like pink to me. Yeah, I don't know why we said pink, but it was a great choice. Uh, I was trying to tick you off, and it didn't work. So uh, let me do something that's more obviously. If I was a bull, that would work. <laughs> okay, so there's red. Yeah, so that's... That's definitely failing for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, I think to get this to pass, I'm just going to steal the code from the spike that did this before. Oh, you already have code that does the other... I, I, I forget that. Yes. Yeah. It's nice to have spikes. Yeah. Um, so the spike, uh, it was in here. And um, by the way, I'm so happy we were able to get rid of that J-frame oh, yeah. nonsense. I was just yeah. so happy about that. Okay, so I'm not going to use all of this. I'm just going to use it as inspiration. Um, so component dot set background. That's what. what yeah, you I think I think it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. um, How do you get the component? By prepare renderer we call the, for we the call row the, and column. We call the superclass. Yeah. So, um, and I have a feeling we're going to need another test because you're going to solve it very simply, and then it will just work for the second row. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to do that, but yes, that would be that would be the best way to do it. I think. Yeah, that's a very um, interval uh, in incremental way of doing it. Yeah. So let me copy this code here, um, and then build it out from there. So we're going to need a component. Um, uh, cell is going to be. Are, do you need to override anything here? Yes. Uh, prepare render is is override. an override. Yeah. Is, should there be an attribute on it? Uh, I don't actually know. Because I saw some of the code that has an override attribute. Um, again, that's something they added to Java after I stopped doing a lot of work in Java. Okay. But Eclipse will tell us um, if it can ever stop thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Um, so we'll pass. We'll call our superclass and we'll say renderer row and column. And prepare renderer is a method uh, when you say it in English five times fast, it breaks your teeth. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm not seeing anything. Now you will say cell dot set background. Let me just do that. I think you're right. I think it should be something we override. Okay, so cell so if row equals two. Awesome. Uh, cell dot set background. Two, alternate background color. It should pass. It should pass. Or maybe it's row equals one actually. Uh, it's row equals zero. One. Yeah, it's not I, the. It's can the, you believe we had a bug in this in one line of code? <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> and if you've watched my, the rest of my videos, you would be surprised yeah. we haven't had more. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Awesome. Okay, so your turn. Um, okay, give, so make make this make this fail in a better way. Ah, uh, well, uh, how do I get back to the uh, shift uh, alt, alt whatever f six Apple f six yeah. yeah okay, there we go. Oh, oh that's, that's not good. One. That's uh, here we go. This one. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something like this. But first of all, I, I want to, to stress what the problem is. The problem is that you only work on the second row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create four rows, and I'm going to assert that the fourth row has the same background color. And then it would be easier to just make it work than just hard-coded. Yeah. Check the, the line mm -hmm. number. I agree. Um, C, uh, V, V, table width, four rows. Four rows. Uh, cell on fourth row. Fourth row. Uh, blah blah blah. And we have this. Uh, control left arrow bridge. I'm not line. taking any chances. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it, isn't it lovely using somebody chances. else's computer? I mean, it's bad enough when it's somebody else's <laughs> keyboard, but now it's a completely different OS than yeah. what you're used to. And yeah, but uh, you know, I'm I'm playing with Ubuntu these days, so I'm not that unfamiliar with being unfamiliar with something. <laughs> so uh, that that one, actually makes sense, although three. I probably shouldn't have. I think this is a test. Uh, let's run it. Okay, that um, should fail. 
Yeah, and it does. And did it fail for the right reason? Yes, it did. Um, let me kill this. And now I can say if the row is modulo uh, not actually, modulo two. No, equals I think it's one. actually mod not modulo two. Yeah, yeah, equals one. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Tell you what, if, if this is wrong, you can write another test. How's that sound? That is true. That is true. Or you just, just a test will fail. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. Um, I think we're good. I think we are good. Um, can we uh, create the actual application and see? Yeah, I think we need, to, I mean, yeah, our tests work, but we do need to test our assumptions. Yeah. Um, I Before we do that, I mean, maybe we should test our assumptions first, but these tests really bother me. The amount of duplication we have here is immense. Um, I have to tell you, I kind of like them. I think it's there. It's better for readability the uh, the amount of duplication here. Well, it's true. I mean, I would. Oops. Well, this at least can come out. Um, it's it is true that I'd love to see how you refactor them. I I would love to see I, that. I, I think I would do it in a way that you would probably really dislike based on other conversations we've had, which you know maybe is a good thing to do. Okay. But let's go ahead and check our assumptions first sure. before we spend a lot of time talking theory and and stuff like that. Let's make sure this is really working because. We are here at the end of our fifth episode, which, uh, if I'm thinking correctly, means we've done a whole week of pairing for our viewers, which is awesome. It feels like a week. <laughs> well, I've really enjoyed working <laughs> with you, too, right? <laughs> um, but I think it would be awesome if we ended out the week with this actually working. So, I agree. So let's, um, let's go ahead and, and test our assumptions, and we can come back. I've made a note to come back and, and look at these tests again. So um, I'm going to go to our our sort of stub code here and um, making this work just just for point of comparison uh, here we are with the existing code mm -hmm. and, oops. and making this work should be and this is actually really cool it should just be replace one just word. this simple Hopefully. alternating row table everyone pray okay Do fingers really crossed pray. all right Interesting. One, two, three. Did you compile it? Oh, it did not work. <laughs> it did not work. Everything it's, is red. It's not alternating. Because it's not, maybe everything is modulate two, maybe? I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, so there's something wrong with our code. Let's assert that the third line is not red. Okay. Because obviously there's some bug. There's obviously some bug somewhere. And then that will fail. But you know what else we are testing? We, all of our tests assume no column header. Mm-hmm. So that could be an issue as well. I would write the, the test for the third line now because I know the third line is going to be red, or at least it looks like. And then if that will not fail, I will create the situation that will make it fail. Okay. So that, then we will create the bug. Um, do you do you want to tell me what to type or do you want to type um, it? Uh, I think it's faster. We don't have a lot of time, so you type it. Okay. Basically, recreate the same test, but okay. the assert will be on the third row instead of the fourth one. Okay. And we'll assert that we get the the standard background color. Okay. Um, third row, and this should be a two, and this should be standard. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that should fail, but it doesn't. So obviously we we are not really recreating what's happening in real life. Yeah. Um, interesting. Is it, it is interesting. I I don't know what is what is the missing link here. I don't either, um, and it's it's kind of a shame because uh, I'm not sure if we can solve this in the time that we have available. But um, if I'm thinking about it more, the um, it's probably somewhere in the override. Let's take a second look at our spike um, because I know that works, uh -huh. and let's see what we're doing differently there. Um, it's other than the is cell selected piece. Um, which isn't applicable anyway, I don't think. I think it's because we have a set background for something, and then from that moment on, it always applies. Something like that. Something weird is happening there, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, my guess is, if we go to the actual table implementation... This is it. This is it? Yeah. Um, uh, we have in the uh, constructor a set background. Yeah, but that's a white. But the set background here is always per cell, not per row. Maybe that's the difference. I don't know. I, I, I really have. I, it's hard for me to try to recreate this. I would. I would uh, find a way to have the test fail. 
That's yeah. my problem here. Yeah, and I don't know how to do that. Um, maybe we do need the frame now. Yeah, maybe we need to just see it run, and maybe. Yeah, I maybe like we need to debug it. I th I think so. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, hopefully, we'll have enough time. So, we will. Uh, let's just go ahead and have this one, which has the four the four rows. We'll go ahead and put the frame in there. I would actually show the frame here, just you know, like a, sp right. a little spike inside and, our unit test. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I agree. So let's see. There's our frame. We've got our. We don't need to do that. Um, we need to do that. Uh, we don't need to do that. So there's our table. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. You do, but uh, the test will not recreate it. So obviously. What do you think the problem is? The problem is that we 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 paint the cell red, but we never paint it any other time, any other way. Oh, you know what? I think you're right, and the reason is, I think you're right. And so it always inherits the, the last color. So, so we can reproduce this in our time. Yeah, because what happens is the way swing works is it always gives you the same component back. It uses a component like a stamp. Okay. So in order to reproduce this, um, what we'd have to do is get, we'd have to do, we'd have to get the cell background for table for three and then get the cell background for two. And see that they don't match. Right. This should be a standard. And they should fail? I think this will fail. Should assert that they're not equal. Um, I mean, I would compare the two and say these should not be equal to each other. That's that's one way to do it. Okay. Um, oh, you can just, yeah, oh, the background. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just I don't like yes. I don't like the multiple assert stuff because if the first one fails, the other one will never run. Yeah. That's that's the thing that I thought we would have a disagreement about. So that is the problem right okay. there. So... Um, let me fix this, and then we can come back to the question of, of yep. the way we have built the tests. Hopefully, we'll have time for that. So I think I'll take this out, and then I'll just say else else row uh, cell dot set background. So that's an interesting Standard. that's an interesting aspect of the way swing works that I didn't think about. It doesn't reset. So if you do something, there we go. Okay, let's run it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh -huh. High five. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, it works. So, there we have the world's ugliest candy stripe table. <laughs> you should have gone with Kermit. <laughs> Green and red? <laughs> red. I, I can do that for you. Oh, uh, God, God. Your, your wish, <laughs> your wish, Roy, is my command. This is the worst football team ever. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, awesome. So, we did manage to finish it before the end of the week, cool. which is great. Um, now, I want to change this. I don't like... That's true. This being the alternate on top. I'm going to make this the standard on top. And, and I would actually refactor this after everything passes to instead of the if row is whatever, to if is first or alternating row. Like uh, either a variable or a method that's Boolean. So it's easier to read. Okay. So um, if, so basically saying pull this out into its own method. Yeah. Like if, if it's alternating, alternate, yeah. if, if alternate, alternating row. Yeah. Um, and then you get, but you get the same thing you didn't want before, like that. Yeah, but then for alternate you can get the uh, standard background. It's not the same. Oh, okay. So now we'll now we'll put it. Back. Let's run everything. Yeah, I think that's more readable. Yeah, I like that. Normally I wouldn't do that, but then that's that's the I think the real advantage of pairing is you mm -hmm. get in these these little ideas that one person might be a little too lazy or like, oh, it's not worth doing it, but it brings it out. Okay, um, so there we are. We didn't get a chance to really look at the test closely, and I think that would have been an interesting discussion, but I don't want to start that now because we don't have much time left. So when you're gone, I'm just going to do it the way I like. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, Roy, thank you very much for coming. Uh, Roy Oshro, author of The Art of Unit Testing, uh, works at TypeMock, which does unit testing tools for .NET and C++. Roy, it's been a real pre pleasure. I really appreciate you coming on. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Uh, and thank you all for watching. Uh, that's it for today, and I will see you next time.